It's another sparkling day here in Central Oregon. I'm Ranger Rob and welcome to the Ranger Rob Country Living Channel. For those of you who don't know about the sparkling day, it's kind of a local thing. Anyway, uh, today is uh, what, Tuesday, I believe it is, and uh, it is a beautiful day. And we got some little things to do today, but today is the day to smell the roses and uh, to talk a few about a few things. But uh, let's go uh, check the towers, then go check the greenhouse, and then go from there. It's sure amazing how everything kind of changes when the leaves start coming out. Uh, these aspens are just gorgeous. And uh, yeah, everything's kind of coming to life here. And uh, I don't know, this gives you a warm and fuzzy feeling. The lawns look beautiful because we got a mowed uh, two days ago. And uh, I still have not figured out exactly where I'm going to put my Starlink. But I think, I think I can put it on the roof. We'll see. So, uh, <clears throat> walking out to the towers here. Uh, it's kind of funny. I try to reduce the water down to five minutes. But it was just enough to not let water <laughs> drop down to the bottom here. So my carrots were kind of lacking water. So I, I turned it back up to seven minutes. And... Uh, uh, so they'll probably make my tank only last three days. So uh, maybe someday I'll increase the tank size, but for now it's fine. You can see uh, <clears throat> all the strawberries are starting to take. Just a matter of time now as, as they get bigger and bigger. Um, yeah, they're just chugging right along. I have a couple still struggling. And then uh, these guys are coming to life, but I got one up here, it's a little sad. But uh, like this one's a double, because we thought it wasn't gonna make it. We can move one of those up to the top. So yeah, we just gotta be patient and see which ones are taking. Uh, we're still doing really well. And believe it or not, a majority of my Walla Walla onions are gonna make it. Um, it'll be interesting to see if they come to full maturity, but, uh, yeah, there's a few here I've got to replace. I think I got some replacements. Um, I'd say maybe seven or eight of them just didn't cut it, but, uh, they got planted kind of early. This puppy here, the NFT system is ready to go and, uh, we're just we put some plants in the raft system because I need their, uh, their roots to be long so they can reach the water. And uh, let's go take a look in the greenhouse to see what we got cooking. That's incredible. So I just walked in here and it looks like the potatoes have grown another inch. Here, 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 over there. I've almost got the dirt to the top. It's truly amazing. Um, so yeah, um, so what I wanted to point out is uh, I took some beans and some uh, sh sugar peas and planted them in here, this area, um, not to grow in the rafts, but to get started and uh, try to get their roots longer. So in the net cups here, what we're looking for is the roots to get a, about an inch or two long under the net cups um, so they look something like oh I imagine this one's got roots on it you see the roots that's what we're looking for so once I establish those roots uh, then they could go into the NFT system uh, in the meantime all the tomatoes are uh, it's kind of like the it took them a little while to kind of like figure out what's going on. Then they kind of take root. And now, like the first row here <clears throat> is uh, kind of like, okay, now we can really cut loose. So this row all along here are the ones that are kind of showing dynamic growth. 
and then uh, I do have some mixed varieties in here uh, and these guys are the newest and they're kind of like establishing and getting their roots going and getting used to the system and the temperatures and then uh, these guys here are uh, <coughs> snap peas these are green beans and we're gonna see how well they do in the greenhouse as opposed to the NFT and these are uh, uh, cucumbers <coughs> and uh, I've heard this description before where um, <coughs> that they start out slow and then all of a sudden they just kind of explode so I'm kind of waiting for that to happen and then uh, we'll put them up on the trellis system as soon as we get uh, some length out of them so anyway so everything's going well the rafts are working well just a matter of time now I find it kind of funny here with well not funny but worrisome and concerning uh, with you know we all know things are getting a little bit on the weird side and of course now we got the pipeline shut down on the East Coast and you would think by now people especially through this whole year to kind of maybe get a little bit more prepared and yet you'll see these reports of someone freaking out like I can't believe there's no gas well you should have known that three days ago why didn't you you know fill up then and and then shortages and, and it's like I can't believe this is happening to us I can't believe this is happening to me <clears throat> and it really comes down to is so many people depend on services and government and if something bad happens they expect government to is going to be there to bail them out I don't think that's going to be the case and I, I think our scenarios here are just going to get worse and worse the supply shortage discussion is uh, one of those things that they talk about it but people don't react until it actually starts happening then by by then it's they start reacting and maybe trying to uh, uh, add things to their uh, pantries and it's too late and then it starts hurting the stores and I don't know why there's this seems like there's so many people that live for now the now or day to day and don't think about the future and good and you know good things and bad things and uh, my attitude is bad things and uncomfortable things will happen and if you try to anticipate them a little bit you can be a little more comfortable um, if there's a coffee shortage I've got tons of coffee and uh, stored away if there's a chicken problem I've got a lot of chicken I've already built up on and uh, and there are certain things if there's gonna be little price hikes it could last 90 days three months or so and if you can hold out you know maybe uh, you'll see a decrease in prices and stuff especially like um, uh, I don't know if fuel is gonna do that I think fuel is gonna get our attention something fierce and uh, you know we have really worked hard on our homestead this year and it really concerned me last year if you haven't watched the older videos where we uh, <clears throat> are kind of contemplating what are we going to do because we're not growing anything because we just moved here um, so to get to this point of now I can produce food um, and we invested in things way ahead of time like a freeze freeze dryer and jars and um, and we've been buying jars a lot we have not hoarded them we buy like a one or two cases every week or two uh, through the winter time and now we've got tons of them and uh, without hurting other people and so uh, now we're gearing up for food production and we're gonna have a place to store it and keep it and freeze dry it and jar it and uh, uh, make sure that we have something to keep our bellies full because uh, I think a lot of the little special things we all like are gonna go away or be harder to get and the basics of foods um, are really what we're gonna have to count on uh, whether it's your beans uh, certain vegetables um, pastas tomato sauces things like that 
those could get a little tougher to get but um like you know we always think oh i can just buy a jar of ragu and uh you'll think twice when you go to the store it's like where's all the ragu <laughs> anyway um and of course the things you want to store up on the things you like not the things you don't like um like i've got some spam and i did buy some canned hams not my favorite but i bought those for long-term things and as i only got like a dozen of each because i really don't like them that much but I do know we need to have the protein around, but I've got the eggs to do that and beans and things like that. Um, and, uh, you know, everything has a cause and effect. If we're going to have shortages on corn, it's going to affect so many products, including our feed for our animals. Um, I'm even stirring up a little extra, uh, more food for our pets. If you really love your pets, then... Uh, have an extra bag a 50 pound bag and then we buy one for each dog and our cat not 50 pounds but um, and we keep them in, in a garbage can like we have out by the chicken pen to keep the mice out of it um, as a backup so um, uh, and our dogs also eat wet canned food too so they get we have a uh, quite a supply of that and uh, because we really love our animals and then uh, times get tough. I've noticed, by the way, from Chewy that certain cans of food I used to order for my chick, my dogs, I can't get anymore, like lamb and rice. <laughs> I can get a smaller can, but not the bigger cans. And then they just discontinued chicken and uh, rice in the bigger cans, but I can get it in small cans. And that's an indication that chicken really is a problem. So, uh, especially if you can't get chicken dog food. Uh, so, uh, anyway, I kind of wanted to share and think out loud is like, if there's some kind of miracle thing I could ask people to do is, is to learn to think ahead a little more, at least 90 days. Can you just do that instead of thinking about just today and maybe tomorrow, push it out a little bit. Don't get all obsessed with the news, but find enough news to understand the areas that you should be concerned about. If corn's going to be low, what do you like that has corn in it? Then maybe you should compensate a little bit. It's not going to hurt you any other than you're going to spend a little more. Um, if gas is going to be expensive, well, then maybe I'll start driving the smaller car instead of the bigger car. Or keep the, uh, fill up your tanks now. And just realize gas is an investment if you could buy it a couple of cents cheaper than two weeks from now. Uh, if you have things you got to run on your homestead, I've got a surplus of gas. I keep about, oh my gosh, 50, 60 gallons of fuel with additive in it. And I did all that last fall. Um, so uh, I can run all of our equipment here and our generator if I had to. And uh, I put stabilizer in all of it, so um, it should last a good long time. So I know, it's, uh, like I said, on this channel we try to lead by example. I don't think we've shown you going over the top, over crazy. We're not buying MREs and things. Uh, we're using common sense foods that a lot of it you can get over the counter. And then if there's things you can buy surplus of, can you store it by either using jars, mylar bags, and freeze drying, or uh, canning, any of that stuff, and just kind of boost up all those areas for a minimal of 90 days. Uh, Sherry and I are well over a six month mark. Um, and uh, if we went into a year's worth, if we really rationed our stuff out, but I think what you're going to see in the future is we're going to have to, uh, like gas, they're going to ask you to ration, especially on the East Coast. And I think uh, a lot of things that start showing short on the, on the grocery store is going to be a little bit of a rationing too. And so uh, uh, this is the time to, to do a few things to compensate for the things that you know you'll miss. And uh, 
whether it's chicken or corn or or some of these other crazy things that they say may be a, a shortage on. And then uh, if we have any banking problem, do you have a lot of money just sitting in the bank? Um, or do you maybe have a stash of it put in a special place uh, on your property? Um, in case you know we can't get to our to the money through our cash machines and I say this because look what happened is I'm not talking about World War three or a apocalyptic thing we had a hacker knock out a system of gas well luckily we're on the West Coast so we don't feel it but we're gonna feel some of it um, but what's the next thing that could come along that could hurt one of our services like electricity or gas um, and when those go out that means pumps don't work ATMs don't work internet doesn't work are you going to be able to handle that for a couple of weeks if not longer um, that's the kind of things that we've been trying to tell you to prepare for and you know Lord I hope that we don't see something worse than that but there's always going to be those evil people that are trying to hurt others and uh, that's kind of what this thing with the pipelines turned out to be and uh, uh, anyway I don't know what is I gotta give you an example if you watch our channel you notice on Wednesdays we do a show called she said he said and so I had a panel of seven on there and uh, I asked the panel are you changing anything? Are you preparing? Are you noticing shortages or anything like that? And almost more than 50% of the panel gave me a blank look. Like, no. <laughs> Why would I do that? Because they just live for the now. Uh, and just complain when things are inconvenient. And only one or two are going, well, yeah. Uh, I, I do prepare a little. And, and that's all I say. Do you do anything? Um, so I know that a large amount of you folks are doing nothing. Um, and I really think when some little new crisis comes along, you're going to really regret that. And uh, once you get in the habit of just kind of a little extra here and there, just so you don't have to go nuts, you'll really feel good. And you'll really, uh, <clears throat> it really takes a lot of stress away knowing that, Yes, it's inconvenient even for us, um, but, uh, you know, can we cook? Oh, yeah, I got tons. I bought a whole bunch of green propane things. I can cook off a uh, Coleman stove. I know how to make a rocket um, stove if I have to. I have the property where I can actually create a little rocket stove right outside the house. Um, I can cook. I can cook water. Can I get water out of my well? Yep, as long as I have that fuel in my generator I can my well will still work so I had it adapted to do that so um, and I didn't do all that at once I've been spreading it out as time has gone on if you watch this channel long enough you'll see that it's building blocks and uh, there's more I'd like to do like I'd like to put a, a wellhead a manual pump on my uh, well also in case some reason I can't get fuel so anyway, someday, but uh, one step at a time. But as time has gone on, if you've watched our channel in the last year, you'll see that everything's been adding up. It's like a year ago, we got a chicken pin done. Everything else here was blank. Um, then we started working on, a, uh, we thought about what we wanted over here, and we started working on the greenhouse. That took us a while. And we've been cleaning up our yard so we can plant more things. And it's just step by step by step. And before you know it, you're going, wow. When I walk outside, I've got all these things to check now. And i got the towers. That took a little while. And uh, it just, that's how it goes. You just, it's, it's a building block. And so, I don't know. I know it's kind of preaching. Maybe I'm ranting. I'm sorry. Why would I even do that to you? It's probably because maybe we care about you. Um, and uh, we don't want to see anybody suffer or be inconvenienced any more than you have to be. We're all going to be inconvenienced. <laughs> um, but it's just, what's the magnitude of your discomfort? And uh, what can we do to help you along with uh, being a little more comfortable during hard times? That's really what it's all about. 
So uh, I'm going to leave it there and uh, try not to let this video get too long. Please take the time to like, subscribe, and share our videos all over the whole wide world. We'd really appreciate it. And uh, be safe out there. And uh, leave comments below and say hello. We'd appreciate it. And uh, we'll talk to you later. Bye. Our videos are made possible by Ranger Rob Poopy Bags. Available at Amazon right now. Thank you very much for watching our video. Please take the time to like, subscribe, and share our videos all over the whole wide world. Thanks.